Hi, my name is Ed Rudiger, and I'm the pastor here at Sligo Presbyterian Church. Now, that's a, a little church in a little town. Sligo, Pennsylvania is about 10 miles south of Clarion, right off of Interstate 80. And this morning, I'm preaching from the Gospel of John. In fact, I'm starting a series uh, dealing with the I Am statements in John. And this morning, we're starting with the first one. Uh, it is uh, from John 6, verse 35, and then verses 41 through 51. So hear the word of God as written by the evangelist John. Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. The people started grumbling because Jesus had said that he was the bread that, come, that had come down from heaven. They were asking each other, isn't he, Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father and mother? How can he say that he's come down from heaven? Jesus told them, Stop grumbling. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me makes them want to come. But if they do come, I will raise them to life on the last day. One of the prophets wrote, God will teach all of them. And so everyone who listens to the Father and learns from me will come to me. The only one who has seen the Father is the one who has come from him. No one else has ever seen the Father. I tell you for certain that everyone who has faith in me has eternal life. I am the bread that gives life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert and later they died. But the bread from heaven has come down so that no one who eats it will ever die. I am that bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live forever. My flesh is the life-giving bread I give to the people of the world. Amen. Praise God for this reading from his word. For the last couple of months, the Wednesday morning Bible study has been looking at the Gospel of John. Last week we finished up chapter 8. And I'll tell you, as y'all who've come to these studies already know, John, well, the Gospel of John is an interesting book. And I say that on, uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, while Matthew, Mark, and Luke seem pretty similar, John, man, he's, he's marching to, his, to the beat of his own drum with a lot of his content and even his writing style really different from the other three. And one of the things that's unique in John is that seven times Jesus says, I am, in Greek, agoami, and then follows it with some symbol which he then explains. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, most of these images we've heard before for example, according to John, Jesus said, I am the light for the world, and I am the good shepherd, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, these are what we call I am statements, and each one teaches us a little bit about who Jesus is and why he's important. And since this is what we've been talking about on Wednesday morning, mornings, I thought it might be a good idea to spend some time this summer looking at each of these statements, beginning with the first one, I am the bread that gives life, or as written in some other translations, I am the bread of life. Now, that's going to be our focus this morning. And you know, we're going to talk about it by answering three questions. First, what did Jesus mean when he said it? And then second, how might we, we receive this bread? And then third, why is this bread important for us? Now, this is what we're going to be doing this morning. And so let's look at the first question. What did Jesus mean when he said, I am the bread that gives life? I mean, what's the relationship between the image, bread, and the person, Jesus? In other words, what did he have in mind when Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who has come to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. Now, to me, that's an excellent question. And I think we can start fi to figure out the answer when we consider some of the stuff that happened right before he made that statement. You see, right at the beginning of chapter 6, John wrote about how Jesus fed a crowd of 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish. 
According to John, Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave thanks to God. He passed the bread to the people, and he did the same with the fish until everyone had plenty to eat. Now, that's what happened. And it must have had a pretty powerful impact on the crowd because a little bit later they followed Jesus and his disciples all the way to the other side of the lake. But it wasn't because they believed in him. No, evidently it was because they wanted some more free, free bread. Something that Jesus understood when he said, I tell you for certain that you are not looking for me because you saw the miracles, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for food that spoils. Work for food that gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give you this food because the Father has given him the right to do so. You see, Jesus understood their motivation. And I'll tell you, if there was any doubt about what they really wanted, it didn't take long for that to become crystal clear. According to John, they replied, What miracle will you work so that we can have faith in you? What will you do? For example, when our ancestors were in the desert, they were given manna to eat. It happened just as the scriptures say, God gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I love this. I, I really do. As a matter of fact, it sounds a little like something we might say. Okay, Jesus, uh, let's, let's think about this. What miracle can you do for us so that we'll believe in you? Let's see, let's, let's see. Oh, I know. You can give us more bread to eat. That'll make us have faith. You know, just like Moses did in the wilderness. Bread for belief. What a deal. Now, now that's what they were saying. And for his part, Jesus was also crystal clear that he wasn't talking about the kind of food they wanted. I mean, Jesus told them, I tell you for certain that Moses wasn't the one who gave you bread from heaven. My father is the one who gave you the true bread from heaven. Who gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread that God gives is the one who came down from heaven to give life to the world. Now that's what Jesus said. But the people, man, they just couldn't seem to let go of the possibility of getting free food. Because right after Jesus told them that they had really misunderstood what God has done, has done and is doing, the people said, Sir, give us this bread and don't ever stop. And I'll tell you, it was this demand that moved Jesus to say, I am the bread that gives life. In other words, he told them that they weren't looking to find the kind, he told them that they weren't going to find the kind of life he was offering and anything that could be formed into loaves. In fact, their ancestors didn't find it in what Moses offered his people in the wilderness. No, Jesus told them that in spite of what they wanted or even expected, he was now the source of life. New life, real life, eternal life. You see, when he said, I am the bread that gives life, I believe he was telling the people back in the day, and brothers and sisters, I think he's telling us that he is now the source of a new kind of life. And in my opinion, that's what he meant. And that really leads to the second question, doesn't it? How might we receive this bread? In other words, since, it re since it's really not like anything you can carry around in a basket or collect like man on the ground, how can we consume this new and different kind of bread so that we can experience this life? And again, I think that's an excellent question. Because just having bread that gives life ain't worth a bucket of spit if we can't eat it, right? And I'll tell you, I think that's why Jesus, that's why what Jesus told the people is so important. Just listen. Jesus told them, stop grumbling. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me makes them want to come. But if they do come, I will raise them to life on the last day. One of the prophets wrote, God will teach all of them. And so everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him will come to me. Now that's what he said. And I believe we can break that down into two parts. One involving God and the other involving us. You see, I think Jesus was really clear that this bread and the life it brings, well, ultimately it's not about us. 
And I'm talking about any of the words we might say or works we might do or promises we might make. You see, it's not about us. Instead, it's about God. It's about God drawing us to the bread of life. In fact, it's like what Jesus is going to say a little bit later in the gospel. You did not choose me. I chose you and sent you out to produce fruit, the kind of fruit that will last. Then my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Man, it's about what God has done in his doing. But having said that, that doesn't, this doesn't mean we're supposed to be passive. You know, just waiting around for God to move us. Because according to Jesus, that's what he's already done. Just think about what he said. Right now, God is teaching us. He's teaching us through his word, and he's teaching us through his community. In other words, right now, he's drawing us in, and he's doing it through sermons and lessons, through reading and conversing, through words spoken and lives lived. That's how he's making us come to the bread. And that's why Jesus said, so anyone who listens to the Father and learns from him will come to me. And I'll tell you why this is important. I think it's the listening and the learning and the living that leads us to believe. To believe that Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be. And to believe that he came to bring blessings to his people and to provide the place where they could meet the Father. And to believe that when they look at Jesus, they encounter God. You see, thanks to what God has done and is doing, we can believe. And as Jesus said, I tell you for certain that everyone who has faith in me has eternal life. You see, this is exactly how we can receive this wonderful bread that gives life. And with all that in mind, we're left with question number three. Why is this bread important to us? I mean, why is it important for us to understand that Jesus is the... Is, the source of a new and different kind of life? And why is it important for us to respond to God by trusting in his son? Well, again, I think Jesus was clear. In the passage we just read, he said, I am the bread that gives life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, and later they died. But the bread from heaven has come down so that no one who eats it will ever die. I am the bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live forever. My flesh is the life-giving bread I give to the people of this world. Now that's what he said. And just think about what it means. Even if we were able to eat manna in the desert, just like the children of Israel, we're still going to die. Because they died. And the reason, well, the kind of life offered through Jesus isn't in the manna. And it doesn't come from people who promise thornless roses and sacrifice free blessings. And it can't be found in political religions or religious politics or frankly anything else our world can provide. None of those things last. No, the life offered by Christ is different because it's eternal. And what's eternal life? Just listen to what Jesus said in the prayer he prayed right before his arrest and crucifixion. Father, the time has come for you to bring glory to your son in order that he may bring glory to you. And you gave him power over all people so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. Eternal life is to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, the one you sent. Now that's eternal life. To know God and to know the one whom God sent. In other words, it's sort of like getting a, a little glimpse of eternity right now. You see, it's simply having a living and a growing relationship with God. One that can offer comfort and hope in the face of death itself. That's what we've been given by God himself. And, but let's get real. We can only, only understand and appreciate it when we make the decision to trust that it's real. 
and to believe that Jesus Christ truly is the bread that gives life. And brothers and sisters, that's why I think this bread is so important for us. Now, in the next six weeks, we'll look at other I am statements made by Jesus in the Gospel of John. And each time we'll use a different image because each time he'll be making a different point about who he is and why he came. And that's certainly the case in what we talked about this morning. I mean, we know that Jesus is the source of life, one that we can claim when we respond to God's call and simply believe, and one that will enable us to enter a new and living relationship with God. And for me, that's the what and the how and the why behind the statement, I am the bread that gives life. Amen. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you found the message meaningful. And remember, if you're ever in the neighborhood of Sligo, Pennsylvania, come on by Sligo Presbyterian Church. Remember, I told you Sligo is about 10 miles south of Clarion, Pennsylvania, northwestern uh, corner of, of the state. Uh, right off of Interstate 80. If you're around here on Sunday at 10 o'clock, please come on by and worship with us. Uh, I think you'll have a good time, and I hope I think you'll also grow a little bit. Of course, if you're around here on Wednesday mornings at 10.30, come on by the, the Bible study. Uh, as I said in the sermon, we're looking at the Gospel of John right now, and, and I think you'll uh, grow from that as well. And so until I have the opportunity to talk with you again, I want you to remember... You, my friend, you are a child of God, and God loves you very much. Goodbye for now. <laughs>